I have a pair of subwoofers here from NVX, going to be doing a review on, also talk about subwoofer wiring and get some subflex action by the end. Stay tuned. Go ahead and dig into the unbox first. This is the VCW 10-4 NVX 10-inch subwoofer, the VC series, rated between 800 and 1000 watts RMS. I have a set of these today that I'm going to be able to do a review on right now, as well as later in the video I'll check out some subwoofer wiring options and talk about some things on that and a subwoofer flex test. So links in the description if you want to know everything about the subwoofer as well as some other things I'll talk about later in the video. Looking at the specs on the side of the box first, just want to look at some of the key points. So some main things you want to know are the peak power is 1600, the RMS is between 800 and 1000. This is the version 3, has a very new stealthy clean look to it from the version 2 and 1 as well as the entire subwoofer has now been blacked out with a black finish on the basket and magnet. So you'll see that in a minute as I get it out. This has a very nice enhanced look to it with the blackout cool look as well as it has a polish, higher quality finish from their previous version too. So I really like the actual pressed paper cone carbon fiber top as well as you can just see when I took it out of there. Take out the other one from the box as well so you can get a good look on both angles for both subs. Really tight suspension out of the box. Subwoofer is brand new, so it hasn't been broken in. Going to give it a little bit of power later in the video, see how the subflex is. But let's look at the side angle here. Really nice high excursion foam surround on here. They come in a dual 4 and a dual 2 ohm voice coil. This is the dual 4 ohm version. And the X max rating of this sucker is 22 millimeters X max. So, and it has a 2.5 inch high temperature aluminum voice coil. And looking like the manual, it says it has a 127 ounce triple stack magnet, which gives it a little bit extra massive power handling capability from their previous version that was rated between 7 and 800 RMS. So definitely handling the capability power a little bit higher from the previous versions from the VC series from NVX. And looking at the bottom here, it shows proof that this is the version 3 rated at 800 to 1000 WRMS wattage. And I like that it has a little sticker that shows it is the 4 ohm DVC dual voice coil 4 ohm. Each side you can see the 4 ohm. We'll actually look at that a little more in depth later with the wiring talk about. So also the frequency response. So this is a 20 to 200 hertz frequency response with a resonance frequency of 29 hertz. I'm actually going to play two test tones later in the video, give you a little subflex action. Going to be doing a 30 hertz tone and a 15 hertz. And of course I am baiting them, but I am going to get them to their limits. And these weigh right at 18 pounds net weight per subwoofer. The package was 19 and a half pounds. So that's about all the information. Details in the description. Let's get these things wired up and then it's subflex. Now let's talk about subwoofer wiring real quick and then we'll get into subflex action. Multimeter on the right, clamp meter on the left, links in the description, Amazon, eBay, if you want to check out where to get these. I use both of these all the time for cardio. Clamp meter to measure ohms or multimeter to measure ohms. And I'm going to check real quick to confirm this is a four ohm voice coil sub. This is a DVC dual voice coil four ohm. Just as a quick check, it'll be within a few tenths and then we'll get into some subwoofer wiring discussion. So I'll check with both multimeter and the clamp. So right around 3.8, so right at 4 ohm, just like it says right there, correct. Usually a few tenths off, but accuracy doesn't have to be exact. There's always a little bit of a jump, but as long as it's within, I'd say, a couple tenths, it's good. And then we'll measure real quick with the clamp meter, see how close it gets. It should be close within, yep, there we go. So 4, four ohm on both. It's a little bit off, but... The coils are still reading fine at the 4 ohm mark. So now let's talk about subwoofer wiring. So subwoofer wiring, you have a 4 ohm DVC or a single 4 ohm SVC subwoofer. Let's just say you have a 2 or a 4 ohm. This concept will work the same whether you run 1 sub, 2, 4, 8, etc. And the same with speakers. So the same concept you use for mid bass and tweeters as well. So I have a dual 4 ohm sub. I already got this one wired up to 2 ohm. So I'll explain how I did that and the concept of it. So I have my multimeter here. Let's go ahead and read this just so I can explain it. So I have, and I definitely want to use a multimeter, not just go off what the manufacturer says. So if you look at that number right there in the multimeter, it says 1.9, so right at 2 ohm. Whereas before, it was 4 ohm on that subwoofer. See, you got uh, right around the 4 ohm mark. Just a little bit of air is making it move a little bit. That happens sometimes, but definitely really close. So if you run a positive and a positive together, 
that'll drop your impedance. So you put your negative and negative together, your positive and positive, that'll drop your impedance from four to two, it splits it in half. And that's the concept of running it in series. So you drop your ohm impedance by running it. And that's what the dual ohm sub, and just by simply running your positive to positive and your negative to negative. So you could also run your positive and positive to the inputs of your monoblock amplifier. So let's just say I had an amplifier and I ran it directly to that. So I put my positive wire on both sides to it. That would be a two ohm. Now let me explain if I reverse that in a eight ohm sense. So instead of going for four ohm, I doubled my impedance by rising up instead of down. All right, so I just wired up the other subwoofer to eight ohm instead of two ohm. So the dual four can go either to an eight ohm or a two ohm for this vice versa. And this is using just a single sub concept. Once you get into multiple subs, it gets a little more complicated until you get the rhythm going. So I ran my negative on one coil and my positive on the other coil together. So when you add a positive on one coil and a negative on the other, it actually jumps your impedance up to uh, double in that impedance. So if it was a dual two ohm, it would jump to four ohm. If it was a four ohm, it jumps to around an eight ohm. So seven ohm, very close, seven, eight ohm. It's not gonna be exact, but if I reset it, it'll change a little bit. But see, I jumped my impedance up by just by simply going in, adding in a four ohm, uh, dual voice coil four ohm positive to the negative here. So if you see, you can see I put the positive and the negative together to get that. So I have a full video. It's over 15 minutes on a full discussion on this. If you want to see it, it's a huge detailed video talking about subwoofer wiring. Check out that in the description if you want to see. Hopefully I explained a little bit on the concept of wiring a subwoofer using a clamp meter or multimeter. Same option on both. And uh, now the last scenario before we do the subflex, I'm going to wire both together and explain that down to one ohm. So now I have both subwoofers wired. This one was down to two ohm from four. This one was down to two ohm from four. And I linked them together in series. So positive and negatives together, positive, positive together, negative, negative together. Now I'm gonna have to check my impedance and make sure it's right around the one ohm mark. So if you put two dual four ohms together, you get down to one ohm on this case scenario here. And then if I run the positive and negative in here, it will show you exactly what that impedance is. So I got that ran in there. Look at that, right at the one ohm mark. So hopefully I explained this pretty well. This concept could be used for a two, four, eight, 16, or even single subwoofer case scenario. It just takes some practice. Also check out the link in the description for a full video. I actually broke it down using uh, some display presentations as well. You'll see if you wanna see more details on wiring and different appearances. And you can Google uh, subwoofer wiring diagram and plug in your subwoofers or impedance and it'll give it to you with a map diagram as well So now let's go ahead and see these babies subwoofer flex action. We'll try 15 Hertz first So that was 15 hertz. Got a good bit of subflex movement on it. Now let's try 30 hertz.
Okay, I hope you enjoyed that subwoofer flex action. The NVX VC series, subwoofer V3, VCW10. These are the dual fours. They also come in dual twos and other subwoofer products from NVX. Be sure to give it a like, stay tuned for more videos. And if you have any questions, check out links in the description first and then also ask in the comment section. See you on the next one.